it's time someone exposed the truth about this darn blanket weed. Hi, so I'm here to expose the truth about blanket weed. I spent a bit of time researching yesterday, looking through all the videos online about blanket weed, and what I found really scary was the amount of information that was in the videos, which was absolute rubbish. So I'm here to expose it. All the conspiracies, all the theories about blanket weed, I'm gonna do my best to explain it and put it in a nice precise video so you can understand what it is and how we remove it. So firstly, where does it come from? So it kind of, blanket weed can come in all different, come all different ways. So it can come on the feet of animals like birds or wildlife. If you have a pond planted up, it can be in the plants when it comes. It can be um, traveling from all different wildlife and creatures and, you know, it just gets into the water. When it gets in there, it's not going anywhere, okay? Unless you do certain things, which we'll talk about. So the thing is with blanket weed, is it can grow up to two meters a day. It's unbelievable how quickly blanket weed can grow. And when we're talking to our clients, particularly our swimming pond clients, the key thing they always talk about is I don't really want to be swimming with blanket weed. So we do lots to make our ponds as safe as possible, but actually blanket weed is always quite a big concern. So we have done lots of research, spent a ton of money to make sure that we can actually find a solution for it. So here's the problem, and here's a little secret for you. When it comes to blanket weed, most companies out there, most people out there that are building ponds, what they do is, they treat the problem. Now what we do is as a company is we treat the cause because if we can stop it happening in the first place, then not only will you not get it, but it can't grow. And that is the secret to getting rid of blanket weed. But it's the secret that nobody does apart from us as a company that I can see, okay? So firstly, let's just talk about some common myths, some things that I've heard over the last few days and heard since I've been in business which every time I hear it, I find really frustrating. So one of the common myths is, it's a really bad year for blanket weed. So to me, if any contractor or anybody says that, that's just a lack of understanding how blanket weed actually grows and how it continues to grow. And ultimately, it's just, a, it just not understanding the science of how blanket weed is there, and we'll come on to that later. Another one that I hear is, Oh, it's because you've put tap water in and not rainwater. Now, I could do a whole video on tap water versus rainwater. I will tell you what I recommend, and I'm gonna go against what everyone else says. All these wildlife experts, everyone says, use rainwater, wrong, okay? I'm gonna put my neck on the line. I'll have loads of people in the comments going, Michael, what are you talking about? It's wrong, and I'll tell you why it's wrong. Tap water, generally speaking, we know what's in tap water. So because we know what's in it, we know how to treat it. Yes, it has a tiny bit of chlorine in there. Yes, it has phosphates in there. Yes, it has nitrates in there. Yes, it sometimes have a bit of ammonia. It has these things in drinking tap water. The problem is with rainwater is it isn't actually that consistent. So rainwater goes all over the place in terms of where its pH balance is. It sometimes generally can be quite soft. And if it's quite soft and the pH struggles to balance, you also can still get phosphates in rainwater. You can still get nitrates in rainwater, although not as much. So actually tap water is easier to work with. So from somebody that looks at the science behind what's actually in water, I'll always say, that you want tap water in and treat it properly, okay? That's from somebody that builds a lot of ponds. So this year we'll probably build about five million pounds worth of ponds. Now, ultimately, if we was getting loads of problems, green water, algae, then you would see that in the company reviews or whatever, okay? But as a company, we know how to um, deal with the water and how we treat it. So that's one of the really big myths that are out there. The other big myth is, I'll just put a blanket weed killer in. Well, there's actually over 400 different types of blanket weed. So blanket weed killers will kill some, but not kill them all. But the thing that blanket weed killers do, which is a real problem, is it kills the blanket weed. So let me explain what I mean. It kills it, it dies, 
But then what it does, it releases all the phosphates. And then what happens is, more blanket weed grows again. Again, it's treating the problem, not the cause. So one of the other myths out there is, filters remove blanket weed. There's not one pond filtration equipment on the market that removes blanket weed. Not one. What filters and UVs do is suspended algae. That's algae that's in the water and the UV destroys it at the DNA level. It doesn't do anything about blanket weed. So when I read, oh, you know, blanket weed, or, you know, if you've got the right filter on it, it'll get, it's rubbish, okay? Now, a filter does do one thing that helps. It does the nitrogen cycle. So in our big swim pond units, and our big swim pond systems, because it does the nitrogen cycle, what happens is we're able to reduce that which the blanket weed will use as food. And I'll come on to that more in a minute. The other thing that I hear is, oh, we can just put copper in. Again, there's over 400 different types of blanket weed and sometimes these copper treatments that are out there do help uh, stop blanket weed from growing, but they don't help all blanket weed from growing. Again, it's tackling that problem, not the cause. So, the question is, what does blanket weed grow with? What, what causes it to grow? So, sunlight is obviously makes a huge difference, okay? So having the sunlight there, it's sunny. Also, another thing is, the pond having clear water means that blanket weed grows. So what you tend to find is, like if you look at this uh, big lake here, Abbey, uh, Abbey Park in Leicester, there's no blanket weed. Trust me, we've looked, because I wanted to hold some at this moment and I, we couldn't find any, because it's a big expanded space, but the water's not clear, so the blanket weed can't actually get going. That's predominantly why this isn't got full of blanket weed. So clear water is really important to get blanket weed. But of course, in a natural swimming pond, we want clear water. So I'm not saying you can't have one without the other. I'm not saying that, and I'm going to explain why later in this video. So that's one big part of it. The other big part of it is nitrates and phosphates in the water. That's what blanket weed uses as food. And because it uses it as food, what we do as a company, our goal is to remove the food source. Because if you remove the food source, the blanket weed can't grow. That's really key. Not one video I've seen online, all these conspiracy theorists about blanket weed, not one of them has said that. And it is the most important factor. Remove the food source, remove the blanket weed. So what we do as a company is we do that. Now, it's not just that. There's lots of other things you've got to do to have a healthy, stable pond. So let me go through the things that you really need to do to create this healthy environment in a pond to make sure that you don't get blanket weed. Firstly, we've got to make sure the pH is stable. So the pH stable is around 8.2 is what we want the pH. Between probably about 7.5 and 8.2, that gives us a stable pH, where the pH is not going to move up and down. Now to get the pH actually stable, you have to make sure that GH and KH, the carbonate hardness, is at the right level. Because if the water's too soft, then the, the pH will move up and down. And it's the same as if the water's too hard, the pH will move up and down. We want the pH to be stable. So in our projects, we treat that to make sure that that happens. The other thing that also is the nitrogen cycle. So I talk a bit, quite a bit about this in my videos, about the gravel bed system used on swimming ponds. So because of this gravel bed system, what happens over time is it fills up with silt and then that is put in there to deal with the nitrogen cycle, but long term it doesn't work. That's why the filtration works, because it's outside of the pond, it's easy to clean, easy to treat it, easy to replace the sponges after five years, so we can always guarantee we get the nitrogen cycle. But these swimming ponds that are built with this gravel bed system, it's old tech, it doesn't work. And this whole, you know, opinion about I get really passionate about this, but this whole opinion about, oh, it's natural. It's not natural. Pumps have still got to feed it round, right? And the problem is, is there's no way that it can actually, long term, do the nitrogen cycle without taking all the gravel beds out and redoing them. Now, I'm not in the business of building projects and redoing them in five or ten years' time. I want to build something and it's there forever. That's what I want to do as a company. So what we do with our system is keep making sure that we do them things to make sure that happens. The other thing is, as well as pH, 
is managing the oxygen level, so making sure the pond's got plenty of oxygen in it. By doing that, we're getting a healthy pond balance. That helps create this fantastic clear water, gets the movement right, and helps us bring down the blanket weed. So again, water movement as well is also important in that. So phosphate management is the big one. A lot of phosphate in tap water. The phosphates in tap water has kept increasing. So this is something we've had to battle against because it's, it's kept increasing over time. So when I first was looking at phosphates in water, I might have seen 0.5 maybe 10 years ago. Now we're seeing regular readings of five, six, even 10. And what we want it to do is come to a level of 0.035. So it's got to come right down. So in our projects, our big swimming pond projects, we put equipment in there which basically brings the phosphate level down over time. So over time, and we've done this now on many projects, we bring the water quality down in terms of phosphate level down so low, blanket weed just can't grow. There's no blanket weed in the swimming pond. I'm not saying it happens straight away. I'm not saying it's instant. I'm not saying it's even the first six months. It can be in some cases, depends how strong it is in the tap water. But over time, it will be gone. No need to put chemicals in the water to kill the blanket weed. No need to you know, have all that maintenance of fishing it out all the time. An actual solution by bringing the phosphate level down properly and over time. So, to summarise, our system that we deliver makes sure on all the projects we do that there is an actual plan in place to have no blanket weed. And that plan in place, by the way, doesn't mean a five year, 10 year maintenance service by my company. What it means is we put something in that pond that gets that phosphate level down really low. And once it's down low and the nitrate level's down low, then actually it's so easily manageable that our clients don't normally take a maintenance out with us after one year or two years. They manage it themselves because over time, our projects get easier to manage, not harder to manage. And that's one of the key things in what we do as a company here at Ponds by Michael Wheat. So hopefully I've broke through some of the conspiracies, the truths out there. This is the video that explains what blanket weed is, what it does to your pond and how we sort it. And that's your lot. Thank you. Like and subscribe.